I have a master's of science and an undergraduate degree in environmental biology. I worked for the last 30 years in the oil and gas industry. I still do, but of course, speaking out, I get very little work. I did uh, wildlife monitoring and oil and gas development areas in the tar sands as well as in a natural gas field in the northwest of Alberta. We did a 10-year cumulative effects assessment project in the Chinchaga area of northwest Alberta, which was my big passion. And um, my business did a lot of cumulative effects assessments, environmental impact assessments, and consultation with First Nations communities, guides, trappers, the, the people who would be affected by these developments. Okay. All right, well, go ahead. So you worked for, did, did, did you originally work for the company that um, is doing a lot of the fracking? I, yes, I wasn't an employee. I had consulted to Encana for quite a few years. I worked for Pan Canadian. Encana was merged between two big companies in Alberta. And one of them was Pan Canadian and one of them was Alberta Energy Corporation. And they both have their own hi interesting history. Alberta Energy Corporation was, was actually tormenting uh, people in Northwest Alberta and Northeast British Columbia. And, and there's a big story there, but they were caught in, with the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and uh, blowing up one of their own gas wells to try to frame a concerned landowner. And so that history comes into Encana. My history with the company was I s worked a number of decades for Pan Canadian, and I always thought they were a much better company. When the two merged, it was as though the good in the company vanished and all the evil came out, bigger than ever before. What, um, okay, so the evil came, what are the examples of that evil? Well, well, it, the promise of we are a good neighbor while coming in and, and abusing communities, dividing and conquering, promising a little bit of money, embarrassingly tiny little bribes in Alberta. In America, at least the people expect and get millions. In Alberta, the people sell themselves out and their children and their community for a few hundred thousand dollars. It's, it's incredible to me. And then using that little bit of money to feed into the dark side of human nature, which I've really found fascinating to observe, and then using that to prevent communities from staying cohesive. Communities used to take care of their own. Now with this new unconventional oil and gas, what I'm finding the companies have learned, no healthy community will allow hydraulic fracturing. So they have to make the community sick. And they do so by feeding the dark side of human nature, which is greed, sloth, uh, selfishness. They feed the ego, they promise a little bit, and then whammo, the community's divided. The people with concerns are then abused by the people who want more money. And, and Canada doesn't even have to do the dirty work. A lot of the other companies, the people in the communities do the dirty work for them. It's an incredibly brilliant technique. It works very well. Everywhere they're fracking, this is happening. And my conclusion as a scientist and as an environmental biologist has, or environmental specialist that has worked in this industry, my conclusion is that no healthy community on this planet would allow hydraulic fracturing because it is not safe. It is impossible to do even with the best rules and regulations industry said last night here in Michigan that the rules here would prevent what happened to us in, Al in Rosebud, Alberta, because there are no coal formations here. That's ridiculous, because nobody knows what they're going to end up doing, deep or shallow in Michigan. And regardless of what formations there are or what type of shales, industry always uses the excuse Oh, no, 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 but what happened in that terrible instance over there, those, that horrible pollution that happened there, that'll never happen here. But it always seems to. And the, the impacts are the same, and industry knowing that the impacts are there. Can you cite examples of what you just said, uh, where they've gone in and said, well, you know, we're not going to, you know, that, that's an isolated problem. We won't have that problem here. Can you give any examples? Oh, yes. In, in Alberta, in America, in the early 90s, they began doing experimental fracking for coal bed methane. And it was, it was deeper. 
And the companies there created terrible pollution and lots of aquifers were compromised, many water wells, and there was a massive class action lawsuit in the early 90s. And the United States Geological Survey did a multi-year study by Chafin. He concluded that nature was not the culprit for gas migration and that man-made fractures and um, activities caused most of the near, the near surface gas in the area. The class action lawsuit settled out of court, unfortunately, and sounds like from what the lawyers have stated with confidentiality agreements. So when this process began in Alberta, while Encana was already experimenting in my community in secret while lying, our politicians and industry were having these big circus show meetings promising, oh, what happened in America will never happen in Alberta. Oh, no, 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 we're going to be far deeper. We're only going to be far below where the drinking water is. Oh, we have the best in the world regulations. No, what happened in America will never happen here in Alberta. We won't let it. We have world-class regulators. We won't allow the noise. We won't allow the dust and the road degradation and the destruction of communities. We will not let communities, or sorry, we will not let companies break the law. But they did. So now here's a Canadian coming to Michigan, and I find this fascinating. So we have in the 90s, Americans devastated by coal bed methane development. They start this development with hydraulic fracturing in Alberta. They promise us it'll never happen to us what happened in America. I'm coming to Michigan. I've been invited to come here to warn people in Michigan. And industry says, oh, no, 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 what happened to you will never happen here. But it already has, just in a different state.